Welcome to a quick tutorial on the green screen. So if you've booked the Media Classroom through Rhonda Moore, you should be able to see uh, that you've got some uh, resources at your disposal that you can use to record yourself in front of a green screen. And then what I'm going to do right now is show you how to knock that background out. So first things first, you walk into the Media Classroom, you'll see a bunch of chairs and desks and tables in place, and you're going to need to move these out of the way. If you're filming somebody at a desk, leave one desk and one or two chairs, um, and I'm going to show you some details on how to set that up properly. Most important thing is you're going to want to leave a good distance between the wall and your subject, maybe 10 feet if, if, uh, if you can. And the main reason is because you're going to want uh, to have some distance so that light doesn't reflect off the wall and onto your subject's hair or clothes or the desk itself. It's going to be really important to maximize that distance to minimize reflection. Okay, so let's say you've captured some green screen footage. You have it now available on your SD card. You can load it onto any one of the workstations in the Lions New Media Center and this tutorial will work for you. Uh, it's in Adobe Creative Suite 5.5. We will be upgrading soon, but the process will still be the same. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone up into my Finder and I've typed in uh, Premiere Pro CS55 and I've opened it. And once you click on it, it loads up. The first thing you're gonna get is this new project window. And so the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to specify where you want to store it. So what I've done is I've created a, a folder on the desktop and I've called it demo. It's going to be important if you want to render out quickly that you work on the computer itself, but be sure to copy your files off when you're done. So here we have a file here on the desktop under a folder called demo and I'm going to give it a title. We're going to call it green screen test. And the first thing it's going to ask you is, well, what kind of sequence do you want to make? We're going to make a timeline, and it's going to want to know what format the video we captured it is in. If you're not sure, it's going to be probably one of two options if you have a, a modern camera that you've taken the, the footage with. It will either be um, 1080p or it will be 720p. The differences in between these two formats is the frame size. So uh, 1080p means uh, 1920 pixels across by 1080 pixels down. And then this is 1280 by 720. Um, most of the time you can get away with working with 720p uh, if you're uploading to YouTube, but if you need to, you can work in 1080p. So first things first, make sure you switch down these options here. Uh, if you've captured using the Lions New Media Center camera, you're gonna wanna use the AVC HD option and you're going to select 1080p and you'll choose 1080p 30. The 30 stands for the frames per second and most of the time you're capturing at 30 frames per second. Okay, let's give this sequence a, a name. So we'll call it test green screen. Welcome to Premiere Pro. If this is the first time you've used this, uh, I'm sorry, it's actually less complicated than it looks. First things first, uh, we're going to break it down section by section and then we're going to go through the green screening process. For starters, you've got this area over here. This is your project window. This is where anything that needs to be worked on, like footage you've captured, visuals, titles, everything is managed and organized in this window. And so what I can do is I can actually create new bins by right clicking and going to new bin. And these are just little arbitrary containers that we can use to keep track of things that we're making or things that we need to keep organized. If you're working on a really big project, you'll find that this uh, really comes in handy. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import some footage that we've captured in the past uh, and we're going, to, we're going to remove the green screen footage from it. So let's start with going into the finder. And so you're going to pull the footage. It's, I recommend you pull the footage off of your cards and put them in a folder on the drive. That way uh, it's going to be a lot faster to work with. And I'm going to pull this footage in here and I'm just going to select this clip I have and drag it into Premiere. It's going to make sense of that footage and display it. I'm going to drag this into this video folder to keep it nice and organized. So as you're aware, uh, maybe you've, you've used Premiere Pro before, but the first thing you want to do is you want to go through your source clips that you have. That's a flattering photo. There we go. And you want to identify the clip, uh, the section of the clip that you want to keep. So let's start back here. You just want me to go through it? Uh, oh, I'll go through it again. I'm going to do two takes. To be sure. I'll take it from here. Okay. okay. So I press the I key to choose my in point, and now I'm going to press O once I'm ready to get my out point. Good? Yeah. Great. So I selected the point that I wanted to take from, from here all the way to here, and you'll see it's got this gray box, and I press the I key to select my in point, and the O key to select my out, my out point. And once I've done that, now I can click and drag this image down onto the timeline. There we go. So now I've got um, this window over here lights up, and this is the program window. So anything that's on my timeline, that I want to export into a final video is going to show up on my timeline down here. And then when I play it back, you'll see that it shows up there on this window here. Okay. 
So the source window here, program window here, which is tied to the timeline, and then this is the effects window, which we're going to get to in a second. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this clip so I can see it a little better. And what we've got here is actually a pretty decent little uh, lighting on the green screen here. And you'll notice that the subject is entirely contained within the space, which is exactly what we need to have for a good green, uh, green screen. So first things first, I'm going to try to just see what kind of uh, key I can take off of this. So I'm going to go into this effects browser over here on the left hand side and I'm going to type in the word ultra. And this little guy here is the plugin that we're going to use to knock out the green background. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag that onto the, the clip. And at first it looks like nothing happens, but that's because every time you want to work with a particular clip, it has controls associated with it. Controls for this plugin, controls for the size, and you manage all those from this little window up here called effects controls. Okay, so we click on effect controls, and you'll see there's ultra key. We just added that right there. These three options up here, motion, opacity, and time remapping, those are automatically on every single clip. So let's start with ultra key. First things first, um, we need to select a key color that we wish to remove. Okay, so I'm going to just grab this little eyedropper here, come on over to this side and click on it. That's actually a pretty good key. Um, it's because it's fairly evenly lit for the most part. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to, um, I can't be 100% certain if this is a very good key, and so the way to find out is to actually change the output from composite to alpha channel. And the reason for that is this actually just shows you what's, what the computer can see and what the computer isn't 100% sure on. That's a really good key. You'll see down here in the bottom corner is that it's a little bit shady. So we're going to want to ramp up um, the, the range of green that it can actually detect and that it will consider uh, suitable for removal. So to do that, I'm going to go into matte generation. And I'm going to go to this little item here called pedestal. And watch that green, watch this area over here that's kind of sparkly a little bit. I'm going to crank that up and you'll see it goes solid black. If you have a key that looks like this where your background or the green screen area is solid black and your subject is solid white, you have a perfect key. It's really, really nice. Uh, some of the most challenging people to do green screen on are uh, blonde haired people because generally the, the light will bounce off the screen and hit their hair, which is why it's important to put some distance between you and the green screen. So I'm going to switch this from alpha channel back to composite and you'll see that we've got this gentleman here uh, on a background that's pure black. Well, that's not quite the image that we want to have. And what's great about green screen is that you can replace it with any footage you want to have. But we, we need to bring that into Premiere Pro as well. And so if you just bear with me for one second, I'm going to grab uh, an image and then we'll replace it in the background. Actually, you know what? Yes. Okay, so I've grabbed an image that I'm going to use in the background. And you can use anything. You can use additional video footage, a uh, still image, whatever you want. And I'm going to click and drag that into my bin. And what you want to do is you want to have um, uh, the object that you'd like to have in the background underneath your video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this clip up in here into Video Track 2. And I'm going to grab this photo and drag that down underneath it. And so what you should see is Grumpy Cat in the background directly on uh, behind this person. Okay. I'm going to play that back. Okay, sounds good. Great. So we've got a really nice key here. We've got a good separation on the background. Uh, we, if you want to work on this image a little bit and change the way it looks, uh, you'll notice I've imported this really high quality uh, large image. If you wish to scale it, just click on the clip and uh, for the actual picture. And you'll see that we've got these effects controls up here for the, uh, um, for the, for the, the photo. And so you go to motion and then you can adjust the scale and you can actually make it smaller. And you adjust the position, you can move the position around. And you can fill the screen a little bit more. Another thing that's great is because we've got this person separated from the background, we can actually move them in the frame and make them smaller too. So what we can do is we click on the video uh, channel here for uh, this character here. And uh, what we can do is we can do the same thing. We can adjust the size and we can also adjust the scale. So I can make them a little smaller. You never want to go over 100%. And I can change his position. This is the vertical. So I can put him down here in the corner. And I can also move him left to right as well. I can have him down here in the corner, like he's this cat's conscience or something. Let's make that cat bigger. Oh, that's good. 
OK? And so when I play it back. Takes each one just to be sure, OK? OK, sounds good. Good? Yeah. Great. And so the length of the, the photo, you'll notice that it cut out when it, it went <laughs> black here when it got to this point. So all you have to do is just stretch this out if you want it to be the same length as your clip. OK. So there you go. That's doing a simple green screen where you take a, I don't know, we'll do another example where the green screen footage isn't as great and I'll show you how to clean it up a bit more. Okay. Um, now that you've got your clip done, let's say I wanted to export this, uh, this beautiful piece of art into a, into a video a format once it's finished. And so the way to do that is you get your, your clip set up here on your timeline and we need to do an export. So we go up to file, export, media, And it's going to open up a dialog box that allows us to choose uh, some details about this video that we're going to work with. So first things first is uh, it's going to ask us, well, what format do you want it in? For maximum compatibility with YouTube and Vimeo uh, and just generally to, to maintain a good uh, encoding, you're going to want to use this one here called H.264. That's an industry standard for video encoding. Uh, and then the next thing you want to do is you want to change the output name to a place where it's going to live once it's all done. So I'm just going to move this into the uh, demo folder here, and we're going to call it test green screen. So it's going to put it in that location there. You'll see uh, the size is going to be full HD. It's going to be 1920 by 1080 at 2930 frames per second. It's going to do it at uh, 9 megabit per second, which is decent quality for uploading to YouTube. And uh, these are the settings you're going to want to use. You're going to want to make sure that your frame size is 1920 by 1080 if, if you started it with that size. You're going to want to make sure your frame rate matches, so 29.97 is good. Pixel aspect ratio, you can set to 16.9. And down here, this is the bitrate setting. So this is the quality or uh, the amount of data that will be being sent per second, so in megabits per second. And generally, 9 is a good number for uploading to YouTube. You'll see you have some different options between VBR and CBR. Uh, if you want a really quick encode, just use CBR and set it to 9. Okay. Down at the very bottom, you'll see uh, you have the option to use maximum render quality and frame blending. You can turn that on if you like. Estimated file size, it'll tell you how big you think your file is going to be. Now, if I just click export, what's going to happen? It's going to put a window here that says exporting with a little uh, pro progress bar, and I won't be able to do anything else in the program, which is kind of disappointing. Let's say you have a bunch of uh, green screen clips that you need to output with different backgrounds, where well, you're going to want to set them all up to in a queue and then export them all at once. So the way you do that is you click on Q once you're happy with all the settings that you've got. And it will say saving, and now we're going to export it into the proper, uh, into that format that we just described that we wanted to have. And it's going to do it through this program called Adobe Media Encoder. Which is nothing more than just a window that has uh, the names of the files that you wish to output with all the settings. And uh, if, I added, if I made another clip, for example, or another sequence, I, and I clicked export and I clicked Q, it would just put it below this one. And when you're ready, you click the play button, and it will go through the process of rendering every single frame, and it will put it into that file that we were hoping to have made. Now, mind you, this is only like a 10-second clip. Your export will take much longer, depending, especially depending on how long it is. Ah, that's satisfying. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to click on... Um, this done button here. That just shows me a log file of uh, how it went. I don't want that. I'm going to right click on this output file and I'm going to go reveal source file. And it's also in the same folder as my, uh, that's not what I want. It's right here. <laughs> yeah, I exported it into the same folder as the source. And so here's test green screen. If I open that up, it should be a nice full screen 1080p video. Uh, with this guy here and Grumpy Cat in the background. Takes each one just to be sure, okay? Okay, sounds good. Good? Yeah. Great. Okay, so that's done. There's our video. There's our output. And that's how you do green screening.